Hey Misfits, welcome back to the Misfit Mama. It's me, Heather, your guide to authentic motherhood and homemaking. I have sifted through countless search results and watched video after video after video to bring to you today my favorite morning routine, research, and inspiration. If you're new around here, welcome to my humble abode. I'm a stay-at-home mom of two, just trying to live my best life in Austin, Texas, and create space for mamas to bring their fullest, truest selves to their hashtag mom life. While you're watching this video, consider subscribing. Just just think about it, okay? Just think about it. It's totally free, and it means we'll get to see each other again right here on YouTube. If you're not new here, wow. <laughs> just wow. Thank you so much for coming back. It really means a lot to me that you're even here and you're still watching. So drop a comment below and say hi. Okay, let's get into the nitty gritty. Today I'm sharing with you my favorite research and inspiration for crafting a morning routine. This is a part of my Making Up Morning Routine series. It's part two. If you haven't checked out part one, I will link part one down below in the description. You don't have to watch them in order if you don't want to. I mean, be wild and crazy. Be a rebel. Feel free to go back and watch part one after this. Now, before we get too deep into this, let me tell you what I was not looking for. How to wake up early. I have children for that. Morning routines for ultimate success and productivity. I'm really not interested in success as the world defines it. And I really wasn't interested in other people's morning routines. So what exactly was I looking for? Well, I know just intuitively that having a routine is helpful for me, even though I'm not someone that loves a lot of structure. But I figured if I'm gonna take the time, and I really did take a lot of time. I mean, it's been like over a month of me researching and implementing different ideas and figuring things out and slowly implementing things. Then I might as well know why experts say having a morning routine is beneficial so that I can make better decisions. So I've got five videos to share with you today. I'll put a link below in the description so you can watch those in full. But for right now, let me take you through the highlights. So first up, I'm going to share with you part of a TED Talk by Mel Robbins called How to Stop Screwing Yourself. A little bit about Mel. I'm reading this part from the description of the TED Talk. Mel Robbins is a married working mother of three, an Ivy educated criminal lawyer, and one of the top career and relationship experts in America. Widely respected for her grab em by the collar advice in tough love, Robbins drills through the mental clutter that stands between people and what they want. Her approach is smart, effective, and entertaining. So I stumbled across this video randomly one night, a couple months ago. This is one of the suggested videos that popped up on a YouTube binge. It happens. And I have been on the Mel Robbins train basically ever since. I've read her book. I will be incorporating her journal into part of my morning routine. I mean, she just really speaks my self-help love language. So I know the title of the talk doesn't really sound like it's about morning routines, because it's not. <laughs> it's really not specifically about morning routines, but this is the video that got me thinking about why it is that I'm so overwhelmed with life in general, as I mentioned um, in part one of this series, and what am I gonna do to change that? And while it's not directly about morning routines, it is about motivating yourself to have the life that you want. So with that said, let's take a look. What's the first decision you made this morning? I bet it was to go back to bed. <laughs> yeah, first decision today, I'm 101 and 400 trillion, I'm gonna go back to sleep. I get it. Your bed is comfortable. It's cozy. It's warm. If you're lucky, you've got, you know, like somebody that you love next to you. Or in my case, I've got my husband and my two kids and possibly the dog. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing up this first decision that you made today and the inner snooze alarm is because in any area of your life, that you want to change any there's one fact that you need to know this one you're never going to feel like it ever no one's coming motivation isn't happening you're never going to feel like it scientists call it activation energy that's what they call the force required to get you to change from what you're doing on autopilot to do something new. So try this test tomorrow. You think you're so fancy. I know you're attending Ted. Try 
this. Tomorrow morning, set your alarm for 30 minutes earlier. And then when it goes off, take those sheets, throw them off, and stand up and start your day. No snooze, no delay, no I'll just wait here for five seconds because Mel's not standing here. Do it. And the reason why I want you to do it is because you will come face to face with the physical and I mean physical force that's required to change your behavior. It's very, very simple to get what you want, but it's not easy. You have to force yourself. And I mean force. I actually tried the challenge she mentioned in the video. I am someone who finds it very difficult to do things that I don't feel like doing. For years, one of the ways that showed up in my life was with my alarm. I would set it a full 45 minutes earlier than I planned on getting up. I was planning to snooze, thinking that that was somehow helping me out. Meanwhile, I was a holy terror in the morning because I was still exhausted. So a couple of weeks after I watched this talk, I finally got up the nerve to try it. I moved my charging station downstairs to my kitchen, got a $10 alarm clock, set it 30 minutes earlier, and told myself the snooze button was dead to me. It's been about three weeks since I started doing that, and I'm now getting up 45 minutes earlier than I had been before, and I have never felt better in the morning. Definitely go watch that whole video. I find that for things that are motivational, you really have to find somebody that speaks in a way that, I mean, well, speaks to you. For me right now, that Mel Robbins is one of those people, so definitely go check her out. This next video is going to be a little bit more practical. It is another TED Talk by a woman named Jan Stanley. She is a writer, a coach, a strategist for Fortune 500 companies, Silicon Valley startups, um, the US Army, and as she mentions in the talk, she's also apparently a eulogy editor. That was a job. In the talk, she provides a framework for using routines for well-being and gives more insight into what the aspects of a good routine are. So let's take a look at that. I've thought a lot about what made this person's life meaningful and that person's life full of joy. And I've come to one realization, and that is that the people who lived the most fulfilling lives knew what was important to them and somehow created their life, crafted their life around that. Their priorities were at the center of their lives. Now, I've also studied the science and psychology of well being and follow the latest research on what makes life beautiful as we're living it. So, today's talk, I'll blend all of that knowledge together. So, what if I told you that a routine is one of the most powerful tools you can access for living a meaningful and fulfilling life. Routines are very beautiful. Routines are also quite useful. Routines are a bridge between strategy and action, between our wildest dream and what we'll do when we wake up tomorrow morning. Now, how do you go about building a routine? Well, there are three elements that I'd like to touch on, habits, practices, and rituals. William James called habits the great flywheel of life, meaning that once we automate our behaviors, they will help us do whatever it is that we set out to do. The second element we can build in are practices. It's about developing ourselves. So to contrast for a moment, a habit is not about learning. A habit is about automating. So it's things that we want to repeat and we'll reap the benefits of repeating them. A practice is about discovery, it's about curiosity, it's about how can we improve, how can we get better at something. Finally, the third element is ritual. What we're talking about here are modern, personalized, symbolic rituals. It's something that helps us really embody, becomes a part of us, the activities that we're using. So as I was thinking about creating my morning routine, I definitely overlooked some of the important aspects that Jan discussed, particularly practices. At this point, I'm still not really sure what practice I'm going to try to incorporate in my morning routine. I have been intrigued by things like writing morning pages um, or Bible journaling, which I, I used to do every day, but I just haven't decided what to try first. I'm pretty sure whatever I pick will be something creative because that's just what I like to do. But at least Jan got me thinking about it. The full video has some really great information, so definitely be sure to check that out in the playlist when this video is over. So keeping on a practical note, this next video features Vanessa Van Edwards. She is a human behavior researcher, 
a best-selling author and the lead investigator of the science of people. She discusses action-oriented and science-backed tips to help make your mornings more restful, productive, and easy. I'll take it, Vanessa. Let's check it out. So okay. the very first thing is not all morning routines are created equal. So you see all these articles that say every morning you should drink lemon water right. or every morning you should work out, but actually you should set your intention first. What do you mean by your intention? So if you think about what do you want more of in your day, it could be productivity, but it also could be being more grounded. Mm -hmm. It could be um, getting your body right. It sure. could be um, that's the only time you have with your family. So actually the very first step I want you to think about is what is your intention for the day? What do you want more of? The second Second thing to do, and this is a little bit counterintuitive, is I want you to actually create a not to do list. A not to do a list. A not to do list. So most of us think of our to do list, right? We think in the morning, right? Got a better list. Got yeah. Do 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 do. Right. But I actually think that it's more important here to set up a not to do list. And the reason for this is because you want to think, what are the things that I do that take away from my goal? The third thing is to set up barriers for that not to do list. The fourth one is to choose what you actually want to replace with. So we've gotten rid of all these things. We set up barriers. What do you want to do instead? I love that. Vanessa talks about how not all morning routines are created equal and that the best morning routine is the one that takes your goals and objectives into account. Sounds familiar. And all that talk of intentions got me wanting to share some intentions inspiration. You already know that I'm all about authenticity. The next video really captured and articulated the intention I want to have with my morning routine um, around authenticity. So it's from Oprah's Super Soul Sunday. If you watched my week two of The Minimalist Game, you know how much I love Oprah. And if you live on planet Earth, you know who Oprah is. Okay, I don't need to tell you who Oprah is. In this quick video, she talks to Janet Mock, who is a best-selling author, a TV host, and a transgender activist about her morning routines, how she lives in the truth every day, and what inspires her. It really resonated with me, so I wanted to share it with you. So here it is. Do you have a favorite quote? You must define yourself for yourself, or you'd be crushed up into other people's fantasies of who you are. What inspires and motivates you? The quest to show up as whatever I am that day. If I'm empty, I'm empty, and I'm okay with being at empty. If I'm full that day and I'm doing the most, I'm okay with being full and doing the most. For me, it's about no longer performing for people and so for me, that's what kind of keeps me going. It's like, how can I just show up and be who I am today? I'm not going to perform activist. I'm not going to perform intellectual or writer. I'm just going to be Janet today. And this is what Janet is today. Mm -hmm. And so that's what keeps me going is that quest for just being able to just be present and be myself. Not for people, but for me. Because I think that that's the only way for me to be useful. Be present with myself. Yes. That is my intention for my morning routine. Um, not to just get things done, but to be present to and for myself. You love that. So last but certainly not least, I wanna share with you a video from Michelle B. I actually found um, her through her other channel, Channel Notes. When I was starting my YouTube channel, she does a lot of great videos on Channel Notes about starting and running a YouTube channel. But on her channel Michelle B. She does more content about minimalism, living intentionally, and things like self-discovery. In the video I'm going to share with you today, she shares 10 ideas of things that you can include in your morning routine. Right now, what I'll share with you are three of them that really resonated with me, and you can definitely check out the full video to see the other seven ideas. Idea number two is to read 10 pages of a book. Make it a part of your morning routine to put on a cup of tea, sit down on your couch, grab out a book, read through, highlight the things that stand out to you. Idea number three is get rid of your decisions. Have the same thing for breakfast every single morning. Eliminate your choices when it comes to what you'll wear for work. Know exactly what minimal makeup look you'll wear in the morning. Especially in the morning, you want to be spending your energy on the important things, the things that actually matter, not like what you're going to wear or how you're going to do your makeup today. By eliminating decisions, you're making your morning so much smoother and giving yourself so much more energy to play with. Idea number six is put your phone away. Genuinely cut yourself off from the little device that is constantly in your hand. My alarm goes off, I stop it, I check the basics so if I have any messages, I might respond to those. And and I literally physically turn my phone off like I don't like So I hope that you found these videos as helpful and inspirational as I did. Next week, I'm hoping to bring you more about where I'm at in the process of actually making my routine. I have a routine going 
I will show you my actual routine. I'm not opposed to people doing that on YouTube. No, I have kind of been like, eh, I don't like to watch people's morning routines. It is interesting to see what people do. I just don't want to base my planning on what other people do. I'm not trying to copy anybody's routine. I really want it to be authentic to me. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll know when part three is live. Hit the button. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. And in the meantime, you know what to do. Keep it real.